live and we are live on YouTube. Happy Sunday morning, everyone. Happy Sunday live, Gordana. Happy Sunday, everyone. And happy Sunday, Lucas. Yes. This, this is one of those Sundays again where we're going to have really lots of fun and mm -hmm. um, we're going to dive deeper into the archetypes, yes. the different archetypes. And last Sunday, we talked about the magician, the one that can change the direction of things in yes. our reality within yes. us. Today, we're going to talk about the lover, the archetype of the lover, the one, um, or this is how I explain it to myself, the one who sees the true nature of everything. Mm, yeah, yeah. The peace the stillness yes the one who is at ease mm. with me so we're going to tap into that archetype today and describe a little bit of around it and see where we go with it yes so i love excited. it <laughs> i love it i am excited too um i'm gonna tweet this out and make sure more people are um following um but what what I was uh, struck by this morning, I think it's so important right now during this time that everyone is going through something right now on a con global consciousness, on a local and an individual space. The lover, mm -hmm. there's this detaching from, uh, it's like the movie theater analogy that Michael Singer brings up in, um, your baby. Can you hear a baby? Right? <laughs> There's an unhappy baby out there. Needs love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but that uh, the movie theater analogy is that when we're in a good movie and we're in it, and then someone sneezes or coughs or talks and it mm -hmm. separates us, it pulls us out of the experience. We look around. The lover, it reminded me, um, does a really good job of holding space. And then seeing, not necessarily the environment, but what, like what the baby needs right now, or, but what another person fully needs apart from, e so there's no ego lens. It's like, oh, okay, I can see how to love this person properly, how to hold space for this person properly, whoever it is in whatever circumstance. When we step into that lover archetype, it separates us so we don't become... Uh, victim of their perception of us, we can detach and say, we are a mirror back to them and we can hold that beautiful space. Yes, absolutely. It's about the, we talk about bypassing the ego and this is the bypasser of ego, the, 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 the original bypasser of ego, ego, because when you tap into the archetype of the lover, there is an enormous expansion in it. Mm, yeah. So it expands beyond the boundaries of ego. This is why it sees everything. Mm. It, it sees everything from its true perspective and its true nature. So hmm. when we tap into the archetype of the lover, we feel the energy expansion around us. And this means that anyone standing in that frequency will be seen in their true light. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. it's such an important archetype to tap into. And as I said last Sunday, these archetypes are patterns in our subconscious mind with, with which we are born. Right. We have them because they help us navigate in a world where we are not always connected to these archetypes. So when you feel that you are in anxiety or when you feel that you're unworthy or when you feel unloved, when you can find that frequency, that energy, that archetype, you can literally put yourself over it, so to speak, so that it becomes like a program. It helps you navigate. It helps you understand what choices to make yes. because it's pre-existing. It is pre-birth. It is interpersonal, which means that everyone has these sets of, of programs within us. I don't like the word programs because we are not machines, but it's the best you can say about this. It's an energy pattern that you tap into. Yes. And the minute you do that, you feel the expansion. But you mm -hmm. can't think yourself into this. You right. literally have to 
feel yourself into this because it's strongly connected to the heart. Yes, yes. Strongly connected to the heart. And how do we tap into these? We talk about it in every session that we've done here. We have to start with the body because it's easy. The easiest way to tap into this archetype is to ask yourself, where in my body do mm. I feel the lover archetype? Mm. Where in your body do you feel it, Lucas? Uh, definitely in the heart. And really it grounds me uh, to my root mm -hmm. chakra. I feel like I am right here, right now mm -hmm. in my heart. So I'm not trying to go somewhere else. I'm not trying to, that's what I mean by holding space. I'm planted and mm -hmm. I'm in my heart and I'm here for the person or I'm looking at the person and mm -hmm. that person might be me. Mm. I might be holding space for myself and needing the lover archetype for myself, but also mm. for another person. Yeah. For me, it's the same thing. It's the heart chakra or the heart mm. area. Mm. But I also feel like there's an expansion. I want to lift my chin up and mm. I want to open up, like, you know, open my arms. It's, yeah. And I think it's because in my body, I feel the expansion of the energy. So it wants to push me forward and open my arms like this. Mm. The warrior is also pushing forward, but it's more like in my, you know, upper body wants to move forward like this. And my arms are more like this than open. And it's a, like a surrendering act. Yeah. yeah fearlessness and surrender at the same time. I feel mm -hmm. it in my body and it stretches me out like this. So that's a way for me to tap into it, but also a strong sensation of peace and mm. connection to who I truly am cannot be hurt by anything. Like in the Course of Miracles, they say the, the connection to that part of myself. Mm. That is where I tap into the lover. Mm. It's beautiful. And it's always, or when I do this, you know, when we, when we do, um, when we say namaste, you put your mm -hmm. fingers to your heart. Mm -hmm. Every time I do that, it's almost like I'm reminding my heart to connect to my brain. Mm. And my brain shuts down and I allow my heart to mm. think for me. Think in quotation marks yeah. because my heart might not be thinking as my brain, but it sure knows what the right feeling is and what the right action and then intuitively the, the intuitive movement that I need to make. Yeah, I love that. Gave me chills when he said that. No, I'm gonna say it's such a beautiful yes. sentiment, action, practice. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there's another thing about the namaste thing. When you touch your heart, you're actually reminding your heart of its importance in your reality. Mm. And when you touch your heart, the heart sends more information to the brain yes. than the other way around. Yes. Yep. Which means that you will have information that is not connected to words and thinking. You will have information that is connected to intuition mm. and intention and feelings. Information which cannot be written down. You just know. It's, it's wisdom. You literally connect to wisdom when you touch your heart. Mm. I remember... Uh, some years ago when I was going through sorrow and sadness and I felt it in my heart. Hmm. I could feel how my heart was going, you know, becoming harder or smaller. And I started doing this exercise where I imagine myself holding my heart like I would hold a little kitten or hmm. a little dog or a puppy. I would hold my heart. In my case, it was a guinea pig because we had a guinea pig at home. So I, I, I was imagining my heart as a little guinea pig. And I started talking to my heart. I could mm. say, dear heart, I'm so sorry for putting you through all of these stressful emotions because the stress comes from my mind and the heart obeys. It does be what I want it to do. I, in quotation marks, because it's my ego doing this. Right. So I would soothe my heart the way I would soothe a little baby or a puppy or a kitten. Hmm. And it became, it became easier for me to relax. My heart would listen to me soothing it in hmm. that way. And it relaxed. It's beautiful. So, yeah. the, I have a book that I read years ago, maybe when I was like 21, talked about the, the neuroscientists and the cardiovascular researcher, they showed that the heart does send a pulse before the brain moves. So the heart actually thinks. 
And it was fascinating because there, I, I it might have been Zig Ziglar, I forget who it was. Years ago, I was listening to one of his talks. I think it was Zig Ziglar. And he said, the old prophet said, as a man thinketh, so is he. But the original saying of that is, as a man thinketh in his heart, yes, so is he. And I'm like, that is so fascinating that the heart is a big difference. huge yeah. difference. Yes, huge difference. Yeah. And sadly, the heart, I mean, that's where we hold the wounds. That's where we hold the pain. That's where we hold the trauma. That's where we hold all this. So our hearts have become so wounded that it's almost like talking about the archetype of the lover seems like, what does that even mean? How is that? What, what there, there can be stickiness, but when we separate ourselves from that trauma for a brief moment and give distance and can look at it and say, okay, how would I have acted? How would I want to act? How we, when we start thinking about what success looks like, I always ask clients, like what does success look like as a, husband or a wife, as a mother or father, as a friend, what is success? Like if I gave you the wand to wave and instantly it became exactly what you wanted, what is it? What, what are you aiming for? I think the lover can create that sense. So I can say in this moment, success looks like loving myself or another in that way. Mm -hmm. And the heart opens back up instead of all the pain and the trauma and the closed downness. Yeah to tap into um, the, the true, your true being here. Yeah, yeah. Beyond the illusion that the ego creates. And you know how we talk about that the ego has two sides, a positive and a negative side. Mm -hmm. And the magician can use the positive side of ego. So does the warrior mm -hmm. use the positive side of the ego to put you on track. But the lover it's almost like it truly bypasses the ego it doesn't mm, use yeah. any of those right. just bypasses it sometimes it is filtered through the positive side of ego that would be when you are setting boundaries mm. when you're being or using the the energy of the archetype lover towards yourself yes yes so that is to set boundaries that's where the ego is needed mm. if you're sending it outwardly it bypasses the ego right. hmm. and everyone that has a child knows exactly what this means i hmm. mean the child can do anything you will still see the beauty of that child you will not see the flaws you will not see what it is doing wrong right. you will bypass it and you will see the true light in the child hmm. that is i think that is one of those biggest things that the archetype of the lover does within us hmm. And we can tap into it, but it can be used in other ways too. I mean, like more in a, on an everyday basis. Say that you're you're a husband and you have a wife and kids, and you need to work and you need to, you know, you need to produce things. Right. The lover in you can say, "Listen, you are good enough without." Yeah. always being the one providing things you're good yeah. enough without the work you're good enough just to be because i think a lot of men who are in, in you know the provider role hmm. they don't have the time to sit down and connect to the lover they do love their children they love their wives they love lots of things but they don't take the time to connect to them you know like when you go up to the mountains with your friends and you're just there. There is no, you don't need to do anything. You're not going to be judged. You're just there. You're just being. And I think that when you take the time, because the lover takes the time to appreciate everything, mm -hmm. because when, you, when you're tapped into the lover and you see the true nature of things, this means that Wherever you are, you will find the love. It will be that frequency mirrored back to you. Mm. Whatever you do, you will find love in this. And I remember a time when I met my husband and I was talking to myself. I had this inner story that only in the spiritual world can I be myself fully. Mm. In this physical world, it's hard because there's too much ego. And I was daydreaming about, you know, becoming more spiritual, less physical. 
Mm -hmm. I was sitting and watching him and we, we were in a restaurant and he was eating and he was enjoying the food and he was, enjoying <laughs> the wine and he was smelling things and he was talking about what he was enjoying. Mm. And I'm like, hmm, I think I'm missing something here. I'm not getting this because he mm -hmm. was tapped into the lover in him and he was loving everything that he mm. was. Yeah. 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 I was tapped into something else. I was judging myself for enjoying the physical world when you tap into the lover you're actually yeah. able to enjoy yes. everything at its full it becomes vibrant mm. but you have to take the time and being present in the now moment yes so the presence is really important taking the time and not thinking that you have to be productive all the time mm. yeah yeah. And there's a sense of giving yourself permission. Yes. Oh my God. And yes. What is, we're mostly trained as children to be, um, I would say, anti free. This, no, don't do that. Don't do that. No, 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 no. So when someone who comes in that, usually it's hopefully a, a grandmotherly grand, this like nurturing wise sage says, it's okay. You can do it. I'm like, oh, I can do it. Thank you. <laughs> you know? And the lover is that for ourselves, like giving ourselves permission to savor, giving ourselves permission to enjoy, giving ourselves permission to, to be and not feel the need to have to go anywhere have to do anything, have to say anything. It's just being in this place right now and everything is perfect. Yeah, it's really very much about, um, you know, being present in the now moment, mindfulness. Yes. That is kind of the mental key to accessing the archetype of the lover. You have mm -hmm. the bodily key where you feel your heart and expansion. Then you have this mental key where you are present. Mm. Present without the masks and without the, yeah. um, the, the need to perform. Yeah, right. Just being present without the masks. And there's an easy way to do that too. You can start every morning. And again, here's my husband, the teacher. Every morning he does this ritual when he's making coffee in the morning. So he grinds the beans and then he smells them and then he pours water. And it's almost like watching an alchemist making something. Mm -hmm. And it's a ritual. He yeah. does it the same way every morning. And I cannot come in and change mm -hmm. stuff for him because then the ritual is lost and the yeah. coffee will not taste good. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it does taste good. But this is the way he does it. Right. He does in that moment. And I've, I've realized this lately that mm. when he is in this ritual, he's very present in the now moment. Mm. And he is focused on the smell and the taste. Yes. And he is vibrantly illuminating the quantum field exactly where he wants it to be illuminated. Right. right. With love because he loves making the coffee if i would have tell, told him i want you to make coffee he wouldn't love it and it wouldn't be a ritual and it wouldn't be this um exercise of connecting to the lover in him mm. i mean it's such a it's such a small thing making co a cup of coffee but that is where you connect to the lover in yes. Him. yes yes it's it's a strange thing to talk about making coffee and connecting to the lover in you but right. as soon as you do things that you love with full presence you're connected to the lover in you the mm. one who enjoys this world regardless of where he is and what he's doing he yeah. enjoys the small things that are there because as i say you're vibrating in a very high frequency when you are connected to the lover in you mm. you're able to see both sides of things yes. you're able to illuminate more which will give you more information of whatever it is that you're doing right and that brings so much richness into our lives when we are connected to the lover in mm. i when i had my company i had a poster up in our office um, that we designed and then we would give it to clients at their inside their employee break rooms and it said have to 
or get to mm. hashtag perspective. Yeah. And when we yes. forget the lover, we have to, everything's yeah. a have to, I have to make coffee this morning because I'm going to work or I have to fill away. But that getting to savors every second. It's a joy to get to do everything. The lover makes life fun. It makes life in ease. It makes life in flow, which is why healing trauma as healing childhood trauma is such a big hurdle to jump over or go through for people to find the lover. Because if they don't heal that trauma, trauma confuses what love is in the first place. So it's like, where, what is love? What is the lover? Is the lover being angry? Is the lover getting its needs met all the time? Mm -hmm. No, the lover is someone who does the work, heals themselves, the archetype of everything's going to be okay. Just mm -hmm. be here now. Just be here now. Come sit with me. Come spend time with me. Come be with me. And I think that's, picture of Gregor grinding the beans and it's so now it's, it's and and I said this on a video the other day that I put out the now moment is infinite. <laughs> it is so fascinating that it's infinite and it's unconditional in the now moment. I mean, we could stay in this mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and now is ever present. <laughs> it is infinite. And you know how, when you look at people who do what they love, they, they vibrate. There's a vibrancy underneath the skin. They yes. don't feel old. Right. You can't see the age in a way. They might right. have wrinkles, but you won't you won't describe them as old people. You would say, oh, what an exciting person. Mm. Some other description that is anything but old. Right. Old would be the last thing you put there. And there is a reason for this. Anytime you tap into the lover in you, doing what you love, you tap into the peace and the silence in the now moment, the eternity of every now moment, which mm -hmm. means that you're connected to eternity beyond time and space. And when you're connected to eternity beyond time and space, well, guess what? You age less because you're connected to a frequency mm -hmm. and energy that goes through you because your heart is open and you're exploring this world fearlessly mm -hmm. in love. Mm. That is what I think that is the true essence of the lover. But then, as you say, we, we carry a lot of traumas within us. Yes. So the trauma from your childhood might be blocking your access to this peaceful, beautiful place within you. The seer of all true things yes. within you yeah. might be blocked by a trauma that you had. Yeah. But it's just blocked. It's not that it is that it isn't there. And right. This is why I repeat this: that these archetypes are there, in their intact form, because it's a frequency we're talking about. So they are there in their intact form, every single one of them, and they are ready. As soon as you vibrate on the right frequency, when you start removing the layers and the masks and the traumas that are there, you tap into it, mm. and it guides you. It becomes this intuition. It becomes this seeking my excitement in this world. It is the lover in you that seeks the excitement and follows the excitement right. because it's about passion. It's about presence. It's about opening up and being mm -hmm. the receiver of everything that is out there in abundance, the beauty that is out there in, in yes. abundance. Yes. Yeah, I think it's one of the most important archetypes, even yeah. though, as I said last Sunday, I'm, I'm, I am very much in the magician thing because I write and I speak and I right. do my thing. So I'm there. But as soon as I forget the lover in me, I become tired. I become adrift. Yeah. I'm not grounded. So I know that I need to find the lover in me. And how do I do that? Well, I watch my husband make coffee or mm -hmm. I'll sit and watch the cherry tree blossom, which it will, it will do in a few days. Yeah. Or I look at my son or I feel my breath in and out. Mm -hmm. There are so many small ways to connect yeah. to the lover in us, but yeah. we forget when we are in stress. Yeah. Without the so right. 
slowing down is one of those things that will help you slowing down breathing in and becoming very present in the now moment mindfully present maybe even creating a small ritual which you do over and over again to connect just doing this is a ritual and connecting to your heart in the namaste greeting might be enough for you Hmm. one thing to I think remember for those that are playing with the archetype of the lover is the lover, I said earlier, gives permission, but it also doesn't demand performance. Meaning if you want to perform, if you want to do something for another or give that space for another to yourself, that's because you're creating space for it. But so often in relationships where people have, where they're trying to pull, what is the image of what does the archetype look like? never would demand of us something that we don't want to do. It never crosses our will. Love never crosses our will. So the lover just holds space, gives permission, and never demands performance of us. So that's where it gets to be fun. That's where it gets to be playful and and present. If we wanted to stay here forever, we can stay here forever. We don't have to go anywhere. Exactly. Um, And you were describing these beautiful traits of this frequency, actually. Like, if you feel the need that you need to take something, you're not connected to the lover in you. Right. That's right. And it's, it's not about just giving, sacrificing yourself. It's not about that either. Mm. It's about allowing it to come out without feeling that you need something in return, you're doing it because you enjoy doing it. You want to do it. You're not doing it because you want something back in return. When you connect to the energy or the archetype of the lover, you realize that it's not transactional because as soon as it becomes transactional, ego is blocking the information. Right. So it's supposed to be not transactional. And if you feel like if I do this, then this will be wanted from me or I want this back, then you know that you're connected to something else, not the lover archetype within mm-hmm. you. For me, the, the, the archetype or the energy of the lover, it wants to be touched and touch mm. without there being any transactions in yeah. it. Yeah. Just I, you know, like in the movie Avatar, where where they say "I see you." Yes, that is yes. the true frequency of the lover archetype. When you say "I see you," even if you see that someone is, you know, looking at this world through their ego, and mm-hmm. you can see how they are fighting with this ego, and they are projecting stuff on you, and you can still stand in your lover archetype energy and say. I see you, I can see you, because as I said in the beginning, it is the seer of things true nature. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So if you can see the true nature, when you can see the fight that is going on within that human being, you can see how their ego is tormenting them. Yes. What if, uh, <laughs> there's a book that I read a long time ago, this, this old um, in the 1800s, this old preacher, tremendous writer, and he was a mystic. And so he spent most of his life in solitude and prayer. And he wrote a lot about prayer and what is prayer? And is it form? Is it function? Is it connection? Is it mysticism? Like what is prayer? And there's lots of beautiful things he wrote about it, but he's mm-hmm. has, um, his name was Ian e. Bounds. Um, okay. e. mm-hmm. And um, he has this really beautiful line that he writes the greatest occupation that one can hold is to become a prayer a prey hyphen er to be in constant communication with the divine and i'm like that's that's a really beautiful play on words pray er not prayer and not pray but a prayer and i think the same could be said for lover is love hyphen er yes. yeah because yeah. for that lover is more than it's 
it's not sexual. It's not sensual. It's not, it's like, it's all of it Yes. for what's needed mm -hmm. for ourselves and for the other, but how can we see it? That's where I mean that separation of creating space and saying, Oh, the greatest love I could give to you now is mm -hmm. whatever that is. And I've talked about this before my wife and I were at a retreat and I looked in her eyes and I realized the greatest love I could give her is to receive her love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to do anything. There was no outbound. It was me going in and saying, okay, mm -hmm. that's the lover in me reminding me that I can just be and not, I don't have to perform or do. Yes. Um, so yeah, there's this beautiful concept of pr love hyphen er, the love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna have to think about it later, but I like it. I like where I'm going with it. it, it it's beautiful because it's a question of love, the, the sender and receiver of love mm -hmm. without any blockages. There. Yes, so yes. You get it. It, it is this, that is the definition of the frequency of the lover and the archetype is the how are you sending but are you able to receive? Because if you're only able to send, you're standing in a wounded position. That's right. That is right. That is right. And it feels like you're, you're giving or you're mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sacrificing something. Yeah. Love is the basic fabric of this universe, which means mm. that there is a abundance of it. So yeah. you can never be without it. You're literally swimming in it. And if you feel like you're giving, 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 but you're not getting anything back and you're speaking from a wound and it's right. really, it's a, it's a painful wound. Mm, right. It is when you can give, but stay open and receive. Mm. As a child, I learned this survival strategy that if I gave love all the time, I wouldn't be attacked. Who would attack someone who gives love all the time? That's so that is a protection for me, but that's not coming from the lover archetype that's it's right the shadow side of it maybe or the negative side of it maybe it's the receiving part as you said i receive you you say something to your children when they say dad i love you what is it yeah, that you say i, I, tell them, I look at them and i say i receive your love yes i receive your love i receive your love and they say back to me at time dad i receive your love and it's just Oh, and I, I wrote a song, um, a really beautiful song. I was playing it for Lauren the other day, um, but it's, I receive, I receive your love. It's everything is that. And look at what media, uh, culture, everything is about us loving the other person. The story of like, I fell in love with the other person, mm -hmm. but there's no real content that I can think of that says receive love is the key to unlocking the lover in us mm -hmm. absolutely this is so central to it because it's a two-way yes. and this is when you're tapped into the lover in you it actually feeds you it will never deplete you of anything right it, it, because you're open you're right. not protecting yourself by sending out love so no one will hurt you right. that's not the right you know perspective or the the right place to stand in but when you say to your children, I receive your love, you're actually allowing them to tap into the lover in them. You're actually mm -hmm. showing them what this archetype is because you're telling them you are capable of yes. loving. Yes. yes. And it is safe to love yes. because it won't wound you when you're open and give, giving love. That's right. So this is such a beautiful thing to say to someone else, I receive your love. It's mm -hmm. almost like saying, I love you. Yes. And receiving yeah. someone's love is giving them love. It, the great, uh, That's why I say the greatest act of love we can give another is to receive their love. So the receiving yeah. and the giving are inseparable. If I receive your love, I've just given you love. Yes. Because, yeah. You're, you, because you're both standing in that <laughs> it's frequency. It's really like portal connection where it's inseparable flow between one and another, us and the divine us and each other, wherever we go, if we can. And I do really believe with every fiber of my being where we are going 
as a collective, as a humanity, there's, I was describing the other day, I had a call with someone who I never met. We, he follows me on social media. I follow him and we had a connect call. And I said, the only way I can describe it is there's like a giant tidal wave or something. They're so big. I can't see the other side. Mm -hmm. Something's coming. Talked about it with you. I don't know. Something is coming. Something is so massive, mm -hmm. but I do believe on the other side of what's coming, mm -hmm. we will all be heart portaled to to each other we will know what love is we will be rid of pain trauma abuse in every form every category and we will walk around as humanity giving and receiving love from one another it's going to be really beautiful i really believe it's coming it's a question of <laughs> accepting the differences that's when you can be at peace with yourself. I mm -hmm. mean, mm -hmm. if you would be the same as me, we wouldn't be having this conversation because it would be like talking to myself. Right, right. We wouldn't. <laughs> there, there has to be some nuances and differences. It's when we stop judging each other from these false perspectives or illusions or um, the ego identity that we have. That is when, when yeah. it feels like we're walking and just giving and receiving love. It doesn't mean that we are all the same. Right. And, you know, I was thinking about this while you were talking about um, how you say, I receive your love. Mm -hmm. And I realize now that I've been doing that, but I didn't say I receive your love for a couple of years or maybe a decade now with my husband. In the beginning when we met and he said, I love you, I, I couldn't... I couldn't receive it. I, I thought, yeah, but he doesn't know me yet. Mm. So I was always thinking that yeah. if he knew me, he wouldn't love me because my mother didn't. And she knew me. I mean, she helped me when I was brand new in this world. Right. So right. saw who I was and yet didn't like me. That's a, ch a child's version of it. It's not, I, I understand that as a grown up, it's not like that. But still, right. that is what was the energy that I was carrying into my marriage with my husband. And when he said, I love you, I love you. I would be like, yeah, but he mm. doesn't know who I am. So I never answered. Mm -hmm. I would say, I love you too. Mm. And the first time I remember saying, I know and meaning it, it felt like, like, like it multiplied what he said to me. He says, I love you. And I say, I know. I, know. Mm. I really know it's yeah. like i'm not That's doubting it i know which yeah. means that i tell myself my inner story becomes i am worthy of love yes yes i'm worthy of it that's the true connection to the lover in me i mean you can't get it from the outside it doesn't help if someone love tells you i love you unless you can feel it and receive it the way you say to your children i receive your love Yes. I mean it. Yes. It has to be meant. <laughs> Otherwise, yes. it doesn't connect you to it. Right. Yeah, that's right. Um, Gloriana has a great question. She says, she asks oh, here, um, when you mention shadow side of the lover, mm -hmm. is the same? Is it the same if we are acting from the wounded or are yes, they different? Please. No, it's the same. It's actually the wounded part of you. It's the, the, the one, the energy that is going through the negative side of your ego, which is always about the wounded side of you, that yes. will distort it. It will make you into someone who suffers or someone who, um, um, who, who gives without getting anything back, who becomes a victim when you do that. That would be the negative side of it. It, it, it will make you feel unworthy. It will make you feel um, adrift with mm. anxiety within you that would be the negative side of it because it's the lack of it it's the lack of the love so even if it comes from the outside still it's it's the core that doesn't receive it it's not open yeah so you're absolutely right it would be the negative side of it yeah the shadow side of the of the lover archetype and it's right. always filtered through ego mm. the negative side of the ego you know, there's a lot of what we're talking about in all these videos and all these Sunday lives. We are talking about living pure soul consciousness. This is how I yeah. see it. It's, it's pure 
free, connected consciousness. And there are so many teachings that have been built up over many years to help people in the shadow side, like on kind of prop up the shadow, shadow okay. side and not make it um, too unruly. But what okay. we're talking about here is coming back to coming fully back into our body. And I remember what it was like to be tra traumatized. Even five, six years ago in May, everything started to change. And I couldn't see another person without seeing myself. I couldn't think of another person without thinking of myself. I was, I was so in ego mm. to think of another was to think of me to see someone else's success made me think, why am I not successful too? Mm -hmm. I could not set. That's why I'm, I'm always talking about holding space or separation, because for me, I was so ingrained in ego that I could not. And yeah, I'd read Tony Robbins. I'd done the thing. I mean, I understood good techniques, but what you and I are talking about is soul alignment to live free, to be free, to never be slave or to, if the, the rut comes up to jump back into that shadow side, we can say, Oh, that's not, that's not, that's not what I want to live in. This is such yeah. an important um, distinction, I think. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a question of being present in the now moment and always looking for the, 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 the alignment. Yes. Yes. And not in a new agey way. Mm -hmm. right? You don't need to close your eyes. You don't need to do anything. You just need to be willing to be aligned every mm -hmm. time. The only thing that you need to sacrifice is the ego. Mm -hmm. You don't need to sacrifice anything else. And the ego, well, the ego is, it is very, very, aware of your identity it tries to keep your identity intact yes. that is what ego does it is that that is the purpose of having the ego here it's supposed to tell you what you like and don't like it's supposed mm -hmm. to hold your identity yeah. and as soon as you start shifting as soon as you start becoming more illuminated as soon as you can you know push push this um, space between you and, and, and your experiences and feelings and stuff, mm. ego becomes worried within you and it mm. will try to put you back into the same old, same old story. Right. So it's not a question of getting rid of the ego. It's not a question of changing everything. It's a question of being present in the now moment and asking oneself, what is my state of consciousness? Mm. And be, is it what I want it to be? And then align. And you have to do it. I'm sorry. You have to do it in every now moment. This is, it, it's not a trick. You can't, it, it's not a technique. Right. It's not a technique. Right. right. It is what it is. You have to be present. You will make mistakes all the time. I make mistakes all the time. Yeah. But what I do is I am willing to open up again. Mm -hmm. I trust that, okay, I made this mistake. It's okay. I'll try it again. I'll try it again. It's God. like learning how to walk. Yes. You can't say, oh, I fell. I won't walk again. You have to, it's like a muscle. You have to train it and train it and train it. And being present in the now moment, it, it's not about it becoming your life, mm -hmm. you know, aligning all the time. It's about living. And when you feel that you're adrift, aligning back. That's so good. Yes. Yes. Well, it's life. You can't. You can't teach it. You have to live it. Um, Carlos, uh, brother Carlos here asks, can we truly love without thinking about all the pain we've been through? And that's a really, really good question. It's a very good question. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the pain is always a contrast. Mm. And a contrast is needed in order to fully feel something. I know, for instance, why I had all the pain in my childhood, mm -hmm. because when I liberated myself from it, it was passion mm -hmm. for me. I, I felt like I was living in passion all the time. It's a part of my identity mm -hmm. to be passionate, to look for my excitement everywhere. And if I didn't have the contrast of all the pain that I had as a child, 
I wouldn't appreciate, and maybe it's the wrong word to use, appreciate, but I wouldn't be able to recognize the intensity in the passion. Yeah. I wouldn't able, be able to see the true vibrancy of it because I don't have a contrast. Mm -hmm. So I do think that we can feel love without the pain, but it, it makes it more vibrant. It makes it more passionate. It makes it more alive yeah. when we have it as a contrast, the pain and the, the, the suffering. That we yeah. I think maybe that is what it's supposed to be used for. Right. It's interesting. Uh, going for a run this morning, Carlos, I was thinking about this very thing. Um, I used to, so <laughs> I was reflecting on the content that I put out and I was more passionate and preachy. And we've talked about this. I was preaching versus teaching and I was more preachy. The closer I was connected to the pain, even though I was on the other side of it, I knew that contrast. And I'm, I was like, ah, you know? and I don't feel the pain any longer. And I'm not preachy any longer as well, or don't feel it that I am. I'm more calm and in, in teaching. But I was remembering, I was reflecting on the walk this morning. I I don't think we ever are supposed to forget the pain. Mm. But we never have to tap into the pain any longer to be. I think what we've come here to be, you to know that vibrant contrast of entrapment and freedom yeah. me to know that massive contrast of entrapment and freedom carlo mm -hmm. the pain to freedom i mean he's mm -hmm. I, I know he is a beautiful soul and he loves freedom um but i was reflecting like i don't feel the pain anymore i don't feel the pain i feel zero pain mm -hmm. I don't feel it either. I can be reminded of it sometimes if I watch a movie and I see mm -hmm. something that reminds me, I, I will be able to understand it in a way which can become emotional, but I don't feel it anymore either. And I think yeah. when you start tapping into these di di different types of archetypes, when you start tapping into them and fully using them, becoming comfortable in your power spot, you realize that you don't need the pain in order to exist. Yes, that's right. Yeah, because sometimes when you have horrible things happening to you as a child, it becomes a part of your identity. And again, ego wants to keep the identity. So it will keep the pain too, because it's a part of the identity. And it becomes a big part of your identity. If that is the story that you keep telling yourself over and over and over in your grown up life, because you're mm. not looking. It. Right, so right. It becomes like mind goes down to heart. The mind is the story that you keep telling yourself, which evokes emotions within you. And before you know it, you're in pain and you don't know why you're in pain right. because right. a memory or something reminded you of it. So when you start tapping into the powerful positions that you actually have at your disposal through these archetypes, you become familiar with this powerful position and mm. the more you're familiar with it the the more you see that you actually don't need the the identification with the pain mm. you have to go through it it's not a question of put you know saying oh it's not there i don't care about it i've forgiven all and it doesn't work that way you right. have to look at it yeah to own it to go through it and and literally label it what was this why did i feel this yeah. where did it come from who is the one poking my ego when i'm a child and when you've done that it's easier for you to release it because it becomes not functional anymore it doesn't function release it and release them i would say one thing yeah. i just realized that maybe the contrast with carlos and you and i you and i are not in proximity relationship uh, energetic field of, of the abuse of people in our lives. And that's, mm -hmm. I, I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. It's like, well, if I'm loving and they'll use that against you, you say you're a loving person. How could you treat me like that? You say you're loving. How could you not be in relationship? I know they've tried to send it at me many times. Like you say you're this and how can mm -hmm. I love myself and I love my wife and I love my children and I'm responsible for me and them 
not you and anyone else. I'm responsible for me, my wife and my children. And ultimately Mm -hmm. me and my children, my wife's responsible for her, you know, and we create this, but so many people who are caught up in that proximity with the abuser still, it's the worst. I mean, religion has, Mm -hmm. I want to use a, a, (laughs) I'm going to lighten my language. Religion has, generationally traumatized millions, if not billions of people with this whole concept of honor, thy father and mother, love your parents, love your parents, love your parents. And it keeps the abusive child in this posturing of, you know, trying to break free. The abusive parent goes, no. And it could be a 50, 60 year old man, woman. It doesn't matter. The abusive parent goes, no. And it goes right back into, okay. And if I could bless everyone on this planet, it would be to separate and loosen those trauma bonds because they're not ever, if truth makes us free and they're not free, then whatever is presented to them is not the truth. And the truth is we must be free of relationship proximity to anyone that inflicts pain. We would never let the person who robs our house back in. (laughs) Okay. I know you robbed me, but Okay. Come back. You're a nice person. And then they rob again and they rob again. And Mm. yeah, you know, it's like emotional abuse. It's, it's when you stay in a relationship, let's say that you have a, a troubled relationship to your parents and you still stay there as a grown up. You can't do anything as a child. It's not your responsibility. And you can't, you can't run out of the home in order to, you know, mm-hmm. get rid of the frequency that is hurting you. So right. you have to stay there. But right. as soon as you are, as soon as you are a grown up, you can actually say something, even though you don't leave the home. You can actually do something about mm. that frequency. Yeah. I think the problem is that we're programmed as children by our parents, knowing or not knowing, they are still doing it. We are swimming in their moods and their their feelings. Wherever they go, we follow them mm-hmm. in, you know, in the shadow of their moods and, and feelings. In that energy, that is where we live as children. So mm-hmm. we are absorbing everything. Right. And when we're born into this world, our mother and our father are the first archetypes that we're actually encountering. Mm. No, the first one is the self, but then it would be the mother and the father. Mm. We are learning how a mother works, how a father works. What is that? Not just with what, what they're saying, but how they are interacting and how they are interacting with right. us. Right. And these first initial programs are wordless. And even when we are grown-ups, when we no longer live with them, but we come and visit them and they trigger something that is, that has been programmed within us when we were small children, we would regress back to that first initial feeling hmm. and action that follows it, right. which means that we will stay children with them forever. This is why we have to go back and find that place where it was triggered, heal that child, And then when that child is healed, you have to do it many, many, many times. You heal the child. It becomes easier for you to stand in this power position, which all the other archetypes give, gives you access Mm -hmm. to because you don't talk from the wound. You Mm -hmm. talk from a healed place. That's right. That's right. That's right. And it's not about fighting. It's not about, you know, becoming angry. Sometimes it is. I mean, both you and I have been angry at our parents mm-hmm. in, in the past and we've talked back to them. And mm-hmm. I've done lots of things in order to distance myself from it. And yet I always found myself going back to the same pattern every time I meet them. Yes. Yes. Because I think that they know more than me when I enter this world. Mm. The logical thing would be that they actually do know more than me and I can learn something from them. Yeah. And it's not always like that. If right. we start looking at our parents as human beings, not as some kind of... Uh, Obligation. Yes, yeah. you know. Yeah. But our, our authorities, yes. when we start looking at them that, that way, it becomes easier to tap into the other, you know, archetypes in order to 
direct our own energy in the right direction through yeah. us and out into the world. Yeah, I was talking about and it's so good. No, it was beautiful. And this shows how much the lover affects every relationship and every dynamic of the archetype. This isn't, this is why it's not a, um, is it dyadic really? It's not the, it's not a sexual relationship with a partner. The lover archetype is all relationships and understanding what is the most loving space primary for myself first. And then for that other person to apply what love is for them. Mm -hmm. And it's how it, it really, this is why I was going back to, if we don't heal these traumas that we hold on to, we really will miss out on the lover of ourselves and the lover that we can tap into. We miss out. There will always be a shadow side telling us that it, we're not good enough. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. You have to do something. There's something, you know, you have to grind the beans. So I have to get caffeinated so I can go to work as opposed yes. to just, yes. Wow. Someone invented a bean grinder. <laughs> like, I don't know, you know, just really enjoying life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, it, there is a difference between gratitude and appreciation. And I think that the lover, the archetype of the lover is strongly connected to appreciation. Mm. Appreciation of everything that is yeah. in our yeah. reality. For me, it's like if you're not connected to the archetype of the lover, or you're always connected, but if it's not coming to you in its clear form, if mm -hmm. it's shadowed by some ego stuff, mm -hmm. Life looks like a black and white movie. Yeah. Everything is either black or white. And it's and everything in between is the same gray thing. Right. It, life becomes dull when you're not connected to the lover in you. Right. Because the lover in you shines light on things. And mm. it becomes vivid. It becomes vibrant. Mm, it becomes colorful. It becomes tasty yeah. and smooth. Hmm. That is what it does. It's a it's a beautiful filter through which we can look at this reality when we're tapped into it. Yes. And it's easy. It, it you do not you do not have to change anything where you are right now in this moment. You can feel the vibrancy of everything hmm. when you breathe in and allow yourself to be connected to the appreciation of being alive in yes. this world. Yes. I mean, yeah. And eventually be appreciating the pain so that we can appreciate now the pleasure and know what one is, know the other. Yes, absolutely. Not seeing it as something like I did as a child. I, I would see everyone else having wings because they had parents who were nice and they yes. had beautiful lives. And I was the one with a backpack yes. filled with bricks. Yes. The pain was the bricks. But That's when right. I went back and looked at it, what is this pain? Why am I carrying it? Because this universe is not out to get me. Right. It is there for, for my benefit. So what am I carrying? And when I open it up and I start looking back in my past, I can see my own power in every single moment that I felt that I was weak. Yes. That's the gold. I was carrying gold. They had wings, but I had gold. Mm, that's beautiful. So, that's just beautiful. that's the pain. The pain is not a negative thing. The pain has a purpose, even though it feels horrible while you're in it, but it has a purpose. And when you, when you find the purpose of it, it becomes gold. Mm, that's right. It's beautiful. That's it is, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Gloriana, Brother yeah. Carlos, great question. And, and, you know, he said, appreciate the pain to appreciate the now, the present. Yeah, that's yes. right. Yes. So and uh, Chavez Frazier, greetings all. Greetings, brother. Um, this was, this is really, this is fun. This is fun. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to share with everyone, we have a course coming out soon. So if you're interested, make sure you message Gordana and, and myself, um, get on the list because we, the course is about clearing and reconnecting to that inner self. And it's such a beautiful and powerful and visceral. You said vivacious, vivid. I was like, oh, I love those words, course. And it's going to be really important to help people heal and and be in that now moment. So make yes. sure you sign up or message us. Yes. And thank Absolutely. you for a great live. This was fun.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being with us this Sunday. Thank you, guys. Bye.